Right. So whatever you can see here, Berbin, this is what generally the business process flow of a business analyst role. Okay, sir. Because the diagram you can see, this is a diagram which explain you about the process flow of a BA. Mm -hmm. This is nothing to do with technology. This is nothing to do with domain. Irrespective of technology and as well as the domain, mm -hmm. the role of a business analyst mm -hmm. is majorly to understand, to gather the requirements of the customer and providing necessary solutions accordingly. Right? So this is what okay. really the role of a BE. Mm -hmm. In this process, we may mm -hmm. require a couple of functional skill sets. Okay. We may require some technical skills also. Okay. Functional skills maybe depends on the kind of domain it belongs to. Let's say you got a customer or you got a job opportunity mm -hmm. in business analysis, but they may require a person whoever is having knowledge of the banking sector because they want a okay. business analyst who should work and deal with banking clients. Okay. Or else you may get a requirement, something relating to healthcare, knowing about okay. uh, healthcare system, knowing about the healthcare mm -hmm. programs which run by the government, right? So mm -hmm. at the same time, knowing about claims, mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, knowing about uh, transaction codes, right? So this this sort, of, this sort of knowledge, this is all something we talk about functional skills. <laughs> Second is technical skills. Technical skills mm -hmm. means knowing about uh, some kind of uh, tools like business intelligence, like data visualization, like uh, Tableau, Power BI. <laughs> At okay. the same time, uh, knowledge over uh, understanding the queries. So for that, knowledge over SQL, structured queries. <laughs> or else, knowledge over migration projects. Because in some organizations, there are some migration projects are happening. Means they are <laughs> migrating from old legacy systems to the new application. Okay. Any technology, any domain I'm saying. Okay. I'm not specifying mm -hmm. it is healthcare or banking, whatever it is, right? So end of the day, mm -hmm. migration. Okay. When there is a migration process is happening, mm -hmm. so that ETL process, this is what we call it as ETL process transfer, means extracting, transforming, and as well as uh, loading the data. Loading. So the data migration, that legacy process, that migration process, wherein whenever we are transforming this. There are possibilities where some integration of API will be done by the technical team. API integration, normally we call it as <laughs> using SOAP API, RESTful API, all that. <laughs> so this sort of knowledge is also one of the core and critical requirement which majorly business analysts require nowadays. <laughs> understand right these are the technical okay. skills of course i am not okay. too technical i am not getting into the detailed ones of course okay to an extent possible this is the second thing mm -hmm. this is the first thing is about the functional skill sets irrespective mm -hmm. of the functionality i was mentioned you that mm -hmm. depends on the people experience what they have gone through earlier that is one sector <laughs> second technical skills as i mentioned you this is the second area where uh, Employers are expecting a business analyst people to be experienced with. Okay. And the third area about application development experience. Like, for example, you want to develop a solution and all, you have to adopt some application development life cycle, something like waterfall mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the traditional practices, we use waterfall, V model, etc. Mm -hmm. Or else, if you follow agile practices and all, you may be following Scrum, XP, Kanban, Lean, right? So DSDM, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So, mm -hmm. so you need to have a knowledge over application development lifecycle experience because whatever the application you are developing, whatever the team you are working on, mm -hmm. your team has to adopt some application development model. Either it can be a waterfall model or it can be an agile model. Knowledge over the process is also one of the key and prominent element people are expecting nowadays. Okay, sir. The reason why, if you can closely see, whenever you are applying for job opportunities, whenever the recruiters or people calling you, mm -hmm. they, there are possibilities because I don't know whether we have faced it or not. There are possibilities that sometimes they will ask you, do you have any experience in uh, agile process or do you have any knowledge over user stories, product background? Yes, they ask, yeah. 
right? So the, the reason why, because they want a business analyst having functional skills, having technical skills, mm -hmm. apart from that, having a knowledge over application development life cycle. It can be yes. a traditional practices, like traditional model means like writing uh, BRD documents, functional and non-functional requirements. Mm -hmm. Software mm -hmm. requirement specifications. This is the mm -hmm. things. Second, when it comes to the traditional practices and all everything, knowledge over uh, uh, mm -hmm. agile practices uh, about knowledge over writing user stories. Either what kind of tool are we going to use? Either it can be Jira. It can be of anything. Mm -hmm. So this is also one of the area where people are expecting you to have some experience or exposure. Okay. This mm -hmm. is the third one. So one is about the functional one, second about the technical one, <laughs> third about uh, the models like SDLC, development lifecycle models, all that. Last but not least, underlying competencies. <laughs> okay. This is nothing to do with teaching. Okay. This okay. is to come with experience. Let's say, for example, there are some requirements was given by the customer wherein your team has started. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, due to the market changes or the business needs, customer want you to upgrade or change the requirements all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. How you are going to deal this situation, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. because the timelines were very limited, your team has already identified the scope of the project, your technical team, and they started working on it. But in between, there are some requirements were changed. Right. So how you are going to handle the situation? This is where generally underlying competencies come into picture. The so conflict okay. management skills, problem solving mm -hmm. skills, decision making skills. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, how communicative you are, irrespective of the language we belong to. Of course, formally we deal with English. That's different. So this is what mm -hmm. generally underlying competencies we call it as scenario based. Right. <laughs> Apart from remaining things I'm talking about with it. <laughs> okay. Apart from functional skills, it's not only about functional, technical, application development, life cycle model, all that. But it is equally important to have an exposure about how you are going to deal these situations. <laughs> For example, the timelines were very limited. Customer want you to make some changes to the existing application. Mm -hmm. So, how you are you going to address this problem? Right? Okay. So, okay, sorry. Is there any possibilities that we are making some changes into the existing application? If yes, how you are going to handle this? Okay. So what kind of situations you come across? Let's say there okay. can be a constraint relating to the budget sometimes. For example, there is some X amount of budget was allocated for the project, for example, right? So, there was mm -hmm. some budget was allocated. Mm -hmm. So within that budget, you have to complete the project. But all of a sudden, requirements were changed. Whenever the requirements mm -hmm. change, technical complexity is increased. Mm -hmm. When there is a technical complexity increased, project complexity increased. When there is a project okay. complexity increased, effort they have to put in high level. Whenever okay. the effort was increased, automatically that will be impacted on the that, that mm -hmm. will be impacted on the budget also, right? Effort increases mm -hmm. automatically, uh, cost will also get increased. Right? Okay. So who will be handling this cost? Usually this will be taken over by the project management team, whatever the budget is. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. So where we need to interact and we need to involve project management team to come out of that right situation, right? Okay. So it can be a budget constraint, okay? It mm -hmm. can be a technical feasibility. Technical constraint can be Let's say, and as an example, I'm giving, okay, let me put you this way. Let's say, for example, there is an application which was there for the customer and which is on the dot .NET technology, okay? What technology? Dot .NET. Dot .NET. Dot .NET. Assume that dot .NET, customer okay. is using an X application called X, mm -hmm. application called X. They are using uh -huh. technology was dot .NET. Okay, they are the now, programmer, the developer is using dot .NET, dot .NET to uh, write code. Let me complete. Yeah. Let me complete. Okay. There will be a situation, mm -hmm. for example, I'm talking about technical complexity. Mm -hmm. So how it happens, I'll tell you. For example, customer is using an application, but that was developed on .NET. Mm -hmm. Now, customer want you to add some new features and functionalities to the existing application. Okay. 
But as .NET technology is very old, it is really difficult for you to add some new features and functionalities to the existing stuff. Assume that there is a compatibility issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. What is that you have to do? You need to, you means as a business analyst team in association with the technical team, mm -hmm. you have to decide what kind of technology is really suitable to them. Remember okay. That? Assume that you have decided that you want to work on Java, for example. Okay. Okay. So when we were deciding to develop this application, because whatever the requirement customer has given to okay. address that Java is the right platform. Assume that that okay. is what you have taken a decision. Mm -hmm. But implementation may not be difficult. But in terms of the infrastructure as well as the environment which customer want you to change is matter. Mm -hmm. Will be a mm -hmm. matter. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Sometimes, because. Customer has a different requirements altogether. Customer okay. has to change their infrastructure in their organization. Okay. From .NET to Java, they have to change the infrastructure. Okay. So till the time people who are knowledgeable, people who are experienced in .NET, immediately mm -hmm. due to the changes and all, they have to change their infrastructure to Java. <laughs> okay. Which sometimes is costly. For example, they have to spend a amount on it and okay. technical complexity also because people has to train under Java so that this new application can be adopted. Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. You got my point, right? So this is yes, technical complexity, how you are going to handle the situations, right? So this is where generally scenario based, this is where we talk about underlying competencies. Okay. Okay, these are the four areas because nobody teaches this, right? So because okay. this has come out of experience. Mm -hmm. because in theory, people can say many things, but end of the day, practically, when you are applying for job opportunities mm -hmm. or whenever okay. you are working on the industry, there are four areas to be focused. The first area, again, I'm repeating domain knowledge or exposure mm -hmm. or functional mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Because if you know about the functional area, it is easy for you to understand their intensity of the problem, what they are facing. Okay. Let's say, as you said, you are from the manufacturing segment, right? Mm -hmm. So what is your, if you, for example, you have got a customer who is from the manufacturing, it is easy for you to address that problem. Why? Because you know about the manufacturing process, how it happens. Okay. Right on, right? Yes, yeah. You'll be having experience because you are from the manufacturing side. It is easy for you to address the problem. You don't see much difficulty in it. Because okay. that's a known thing for you. Am I right or not? Right? Yes, yeah. So functional knowledge people expect. Technical knowledge, knowing about the technology. Of course, technology doesn't have any barriers. To what mm -hmm. expertise you are having technical knowledge, that is different. That is a mm -hmm. different altogether. Right? Some people will have knowledge or programming also. That is different, right? So because technical skills, to what extent are we adopting? Are we experiencing? That is depends on the personal interest also. Okay. Because some people doesn't have any interest towards, towards coding, right? So they are not interested to write code, right? Some people. Some okay. people say that, uh, sir, we are not interested to write coding, right? I'm not interested, right? So the reason okay. I'm, I'm cho I have chosen a career for business on this, right? Some people say okay. Some people out of curiosity, out of interest, they want to learn. So okay. they, as far as the technical expertise it's, uh, itself is concerned, I don't say... You learn this, you get a job. That is something okay. absolutely blender. I shouldn't say that, right? Because mm -hmm. technology has lot many things. Some people may require to have a knowledge over SQL. Some people may ask you Tableau. Some people may ask you Power BI. Some people may ask you may ask you to have a knowledge over Java. Some people may ask you about Python. They may be R group. Depends on because the kind of profile they require and all technology. See, there is no specific technology as such that learn these three, four technologies, you get a job. Nothing of that sort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because technology has not many things, right? Okay. Because somebody used mule soft, right? So somebody is yeah. using service now. So mm -hmm. understanding over the technologies and how they are transforming the technologies is what generally being a BA you have to adopt. Okay, sir. Right. So this sort of knowledge is required. That's what I'm talking about technology. Okay. Technology mm -hmm. is nothing that... Of course, there are some basic things like SQL, 
or business intelligence and all everything we're asking now but you cannot <laughs> we cannot confirm that this is the only thing happens in future also future in future there are many other technical things which might mm -hmm. be required for us as far as the job profiles are concerned so that okay. learning towards the technology is always helpful for a ba this is the second area okay third area about the models software development life cycle models etc whether it can be waterfall or agile. At the same time, scenario-based understanding, exposure is also required. Okay. So these are the four skill sets. Any Whenever you attend for an interview, whenever you join for any, uh, whenever you attend for any interviews or whenever you join for any organization as a business analyst, these are the four areas which generally people will be experienced, people will require. Okay. And whatever coming back to our session, whatever the practical exposure, I don't say it is experience, but at the end of the day, of course, it is an exposure. Whatever the exposure are you going to get is on these four areas. Okay. Some sort of functional knowledge, some sort of uh, technicalities, any way you are known with, when it is required, you will be adopting it. Mm -hmm. Third was about uh, how we are implementing by writing documents or by writing user stories, you will be knowing the third one. Okay. Fourth one, it is scenario based. That is nothing okay. to be teaching. With, with, while you are interacting with me at the time mm -hmm. of project based training and all, you will be knowing all this. Okay, sir. Understood? Clear? Right. So okay. these are the four skill sets you will be learning. So I am not going mm -hmm. to teach you the basics of BA. If you want, you can ask me. I, I'll, I'll explain. I don't mind in it. But that is that unnecessary that uh, kills the time. Right. So that is what it is. Okay, sir. Now, this is what generally the business analysis process flow, right? So you can see mm -hmm. here. The mm -hmm. first thing, I'll explain you the stepwise procedure. The first one about you have to gather the background information. You know that. Mm -hmm. Second, we need to identify the stakeholders. To identify the stakeholders, there are different things we use. Like mm -hmm. something like power and interest grade, right? So after that, when you want to manage your stakeholders' racy matrix, all mm -hmm. these things are comes under the second level. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a high level view. Okay. Understand. This. Okay. Next, you need to discover the business objectives because if you have not identified the business objectives of the customer, whatever the project objectives you have defined doesn't have any value because mm -hmm. business objectives and project objectives must be both the same. Okay. And only the project is considered as com successfully completed according to the requirement of the customer. It's not okay. that, that we are providing a solution, but that must be useful to the customer. That is matters. Okay. In, that matters okay. in it. So okay. defining the business objectives. If you want to define the business objectives, what is that you need to do? You have to do stakeholder matrix. This is where I have to mm -hmm. determine it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where I have told you, right? These two have connectivities. Okay. Mm -hmm. These two have. Because to identify the stakeholder and all everything, we use power and interest grid, right? Power and interest grid. Power and interest power. grid is what we do. So once the stakeholder identification, we did stakeholder matrix using RACI. Responsibility, mm -hmm. accountability, consulted, informed, right? So accountability, mm -hmm. support, consulted, right? This is where generally stakeholder matrix come into picture. Mm -hmm. Understand, right? Okay. And are following, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going, 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 After okay. that, we need to do the background check, right? Background checking about the background information, whatever is required and all. The next, you need to evaluate the options. This evaluation mm -hmm. options is what we call it as business solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to evaluate the options here. So if you want to evaluate the options, the basic thing you have to prepare is a business case document. Mm -hmm. Please do remember, this is not BRD, okay, business case. Okay. So business case is a preliminary document which explains you about the process of the business. Okay, this is but prepared is... by business analyst, correct? Business ah, case document. Ah, yes, business. but because some organizations, some BAs traditionally, they prepare business case. Some people don't. It depends on mm -hmm. the organization to organization. Some people prepare business case document, then they'll get into BRD. Some prepare, okay. some prepare their own notes for business case, then they'll prepare BRD. Okay. That is. But understanding the business case and writing the business case is always important so that we'll be knowing about how to evaluate the options. Okay. Clear to you, right? Okay. Next, you need to define the scope. So for that, you have to write down the scope document. 
This is where generally scope, vision, and project document is. Vision document mm -hmm. and scope project document. Because mm -hmm. scope nothing but possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before you are getting into the project, before you are going to start the project, always important for us to understand the scope. Okay. So if you don't understand the scope, what happened? For example, if there is no scope you have identified, let's say that you have project started. All of mm -hmm. a sudden you got some other requirements and came and added to your project. What will happen now? Your mm -hmm. budget is affecting, your timelines are getting affected, your complexity of the project is getting affected, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, yeah. So scope of the document is important, but to prepare the scope of the document, generally in real environment, what is that we do? It is with BA, it is with project management team. With the help of technical team, generally scope of the document is what generally we have to define. So it's not only about evaluating the options, defining the scope is also essentially required. Okay. Okay. Next be a delivery plan because being a business analyst, we have to prepare a delivery plan where this is where generally project planning come into picture. This is with the help of project management team. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. So once we have prepared a BA delivery plan, we need to define the project requirements. If you mm -hmm. want to define the business project requirements and all, there must be some communication medium. Am I right? Okay. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that is the reason why we have to understand the SDLC process. Okay. Software development life cycle. In this software development life cycle model, you will be choosing what kind of model are we going to use. Let's say, for example, mm -hmm. if you are following the traditional model, right? So, for example, if you follow... Uh, mm -hmm. waterfall model and all everything you prepare brds on it okay yes yeah so if you follow agile practices and all in spite of documentation you will be writing some user stories okay so okay understand right so this is what generally happens here after mm -hmm. that we have to evaluate the value addition to the project because whatever the project we are developing for sure mm -hmm. it should provide a value addition to the customer then only it has a value understand right okay Okay. So value addition is important. So this is value addition. Generally, we call it as ROI. We mm -hmm. call it as ROI. ROI stands for return of investment. investment. Okay. Because customer is about customer is spending some X amount of money for what purpose? Mm -hmm. They want some return out of it. Am I right? Or not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's yes. say, for example, let me put you this from the manufacturing side. Let's say, for example, mm -hmm. your manufacturing industry requires some application as part of their manufacturing a process or packaging, labeling, et cetera, et cetera, whatever the reason. Yeah, they want okay. some IT companies to develop some solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. For what purpose mm -hmm. it was? It is for two different reasons. Mm -hmm. Either because of the solution, they mm -hmm. want to enhance their organizational performance. Okay. Or else due to that, they might require to get some additional revenue. Any one okay. or two also sometimes. Am I right or not? Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. This is where we talk about return of investment. Right? Okay. Yes. Understood. So okay, sir. whenever you are developing a solution, we have to keep that into an account being a business analyst. It's not only a solution you are developing, mm -hmm. but that should be a value addition to the customer. Then only it will be uh, it will be helpful. Otherwise, there is no uh, there is no possibility, right? There is no value for that. Understand? Okay. This is where generally we talk about written of investment, which normally we call it as ROI. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Next, if there is any potential enhancements to be made, because when there is a project we are developing, there are requirements where we have to do some potential uh, enhancements, all that, so which we are supposed to do with. Right. So any potential mm -hmm. enhancements and all everything. So those potential enhancements, if you want to do, we can do it. Otherwise, no. So once it is done, once everything is done, finally project will be completed and project will be delivered to the customer. Right. So this okay, is sir. what it was. Right. So this is what generally the whole understanding over business analysis process flow, which being a business analyst, you must be exposure with. Understand? Okay. Clear. Right. Mm -hmm. So for that, you will be learning, right? So first of all, I'll give you the project case study. I'll give you project will be mm -hmm. given. First of all, we'll discuss on the project. Slowly, we'll getting into the mm -hmm. 
how to do it, right? How to do what to do. There will be some assignments I am going to provide to you. Okay. So you have to do these assignments on day-to-day -day basis and weekly basis. Okay, sir. So that you get some hands-on because how? How you will be knowing? End of the day, what is that you have to get experience is how? Okay. okay, sir. You know everything about what, when, who, where, all these things you know. Okay? Yes, yeah. All these things you know, but what is that you don't know is how? Yes, yeah. How is uh, where missing, right? Because how yes, that's yeah. not experience. experience. Yes, yeah. How so, how to do, right? How to yeah. move further, right? So this is mm -hmm. where most of the people who are learning business analyst, unfortunately, were lacking here. Because mm -hmm. they know about all the practices, they know about all the skill sets, everything. But how to implement, mm -hmm. how to do a project, this is where most of the people are lacking, okay? Mm -hmm. so how to do this, how to address this problem, how to identify the business objectives, how to write the document, how to understand the written of investment, right? How to understand the business goal and vision. So for that, you need to have a study over the industry first. Whichever mm -hmm. client you are working on, you must be knowing about what is client is working, what are their objectives, goals and vision. So this is what generally practically you need to learn. Okay, sir. So this is what you are going to do from uh, okay, sir.